hello all welcome to the 16th 17th session on sap web free learning series and today we are going to discuss uh, modularization technique next part that is function modules and function groups what is function module and function groups we are going to discuss and then we are going to go and create the function modules in our say, uh, system and then we will see what we go from there and here also function modules are also like a reusable piece of code that you write but uh, there is a difference between the function modules and uh, what you call uh, subroutines okay there is a huge difference between them one thing that uh, subroutines you cannot call outside that program right we have seen that if i have defined any subroutine here that day i was defining this part i missed it if instead of uh, going for that uh, include i can define the proof form here also and i will just comment this one i don't need this subroutine i have that in my subroutine here itself i have defined it in the program itself but this is not go good program technique it makes you look look your code very clumsy and then that subroutine you cannot use it outside also in any other program so that is one thing but what i can do you see here uh, now it's not showing any error it's activated and it will print the output same as earlier okay same as we saw in the last last class it will print 4 plus 6 equal to 10 it will print okay here 10 is coming next is hard code value so it is printing that one also and gvnum it is currently showing as 0 because there is no logic for gvnum in this add number definition okay it was in that under. now if i will do here again and i will try to activate it let's see what error it gives a form is already exist with the name add number it says already existing it is picking the definition from this module is sub that is declared so you saying it's saying that you cannot have two two definition twice okay that already exists so just comment it or remove it so i will comment it out and i will activate it without error okay so no errors now it's got activated easily so but the thing is the subroutine what i have defined here in this program not in the subroutine, not in the include, I'm talking about in this program, gmodulized program, that can be used in another program using something called, uh, let's say, just comment it, comment it, I want to use include of this program into another program, okay, so that also is possible, how it is possible, let me see if I can make it work, I don't remember the syntax exactly, but I will give you the idea how it works, okay, and if possible, then we will make it work as well. Uh, what I will do is remove this sub here and I want it uh, I will uncomment this one I want a subroutine in this program which I want to use it in another program another report I want to use it so there is a program name there is a concept called submit ok so performs add number and blah 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 submit uh, what is the submit statement syntax Okay, so there will be documentation, submit and you see, submit, uh, report name, okay, then we have to give the report name, okay, let's uh, learn from this one, submit G modularization, generally we never use this technique, but yeah, this is something I wanted to show you because it will help you to compare with function module, because the question will arise in the interview that when we can call the subroutine of uh, another program which we have defined in another program we can use it here then why to use function module function module is something that we globally declared in a t code called se37 there we declare something called function module we create an object data object uh, called function module which development object function module and we use it here we call it in our program anywhere and we can call the same function module at multiple places okay so then they will ask what is the difference when we can call the subroutine also in another program from one program then why why you, we to define function modules okay why to have function modules okay so you see the differences between them okay so add number the subroutine name i'm not sure how we call it let's see subroutine this and return is optional return means it will control will come back to this program again after submitting the statement you come to this i think you have to give form or something let's see what is the syntax sorry 
submit job option selection and return and flow report name specify the directly or statically as ref and uh, submit 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 and return submit and return all update and no exception handling then not submit selection screen list options selection screen parameters filling selection screen parameters so there is a option here via selection screen what we are going to do it via subroutine how to do that with subroutine I am not able to find out let me see on google if you can find out calling subroutine of one report in another using submit in SAP app ok so let's see that's how I calling form you see calling form from another program calling program from another program and passive values passing values calling one program from another program submit a web report here to workbench submit statement okay let's see how they do it report to perform get get report to okay something like this they are calling it and get report to they have this subroutine here you see so this is the syntax i believe so let's say without submit they are calling it okay but there is a submit also statement is also there i believe submit report name with with exporting and return let's see we'll use this one we will avoid the submit statement i will remove it for now so our report name is jet model edge jet model edge instead of jet rep 2 and the submitted name is add number perform add number this ok so now what i will do i will try to activate it let's see if it gets activated ok so i am trying to activate both the program but one is being edited by me that's what it says so let's go and let's uh, go to display mode here and then try to activate it here it will activate both the program ok now i will put a breakpoint here and we will see if subroutine gets called execute this program and the debugger will trigger in here if i press f5 it will should go inside the subroutine it will dump turn it because one ok we have got us some kind of sort dump ok so three parameters ok it says it has three parameters so we have not passed the three parameters ok so what we will do, we will pass three parameters here in the model range one. Okay, and see how it's okay. Using and we have this data and all now. So we'll pass these things, spy D battery, whatever it is. Spy D battery and then changing sub right. So these things we have to pass because this signature, this function, if subroutine signature is asking for these parameters. Okay, so let's assign some value to this variable so that we will get some value in the output and we'll write it out. Okay, right? What we need to write? I will write the sub variable because sub will carry the value from the subroutine. It is changing parameter. It will do the summation of both. So spidey I will pass as. So that's why I created this another program in my last class and I forgot to discuss. So here I am discussing this one. So let's say pass 10 and then battery you pass as 19. Okay. Just activate it. So what do you think should happen? It should print 29. It is printing 29. So the subroutine of another program if you will see I will show you how the control flows. I will execute this program. It will go actually inside that program to call that subroutine. Okay. You see here. Spidey Betty is having the values 19 and 10. And sub will be having value 0. Now if I will do F5. 
which is like executing a statement each statement so it will go inside the de definition of the subroutine and which is in g modularized program we are currently you see here g modularized one program we are in g modularized one as soon as i will do f5 you see control change it has gone to g modularized program and its subroutine add number definition so we can call the subroutine of other program in other uh, in different uh, report we can call it okay so now the question arises why to go for function model then what is function model why to go for function model so first of all try to understand the difference between subroutine and function model external subroutine this call what we have made just now from external program this is called external subroutine call okay so that is external subroutine in function model parameters we are not defining like uh, using a by using a web statement we don't define here we have some uh, tabs you will see will have what i will do i will create jet uh, modularize again i will give the same naming convention so that it will be easy to figure uh, figure out jet modularize underscore fm i will give okay and i will say create so what happened it will ask you something called function group what is function group it's a uh, function group is a kind of uh, program it's a report that contains the function module okay so whatever the function module we are creating this is the global development object which is available all across the report anywhere the subroutine that we create that is locally available in the program and when you are calling it into the another program you have to give the reference of that uh, program in which the subroutine is defined you see here i have given the reference of that program okay but function module are independent reusable modules which you can directly call here also and call in other program also call in any number of program, any number of places doesn't matter inside the subroutine also you can call the function modules okay it's the i have to remove the web points take it here then remove it why oh, it is coming here take it out take it out take it out okay anyways leave it uh yeah so i was at function group and function module so what happens whenever you try to create a function module function module will contain a piece of code just like we saw one logic for adding up similarly we will have function module for various purposes we will create and uh, it will not have using or uh, changing things okay we will not use uh, any web statement to declare these things we will have separate screen to define the tabs will be there where you will define the using parameter change by importing and exporting parameters we have an import exporting and importing parameters there importing and we will have changing parameters and there it's very strict okay it's not like you, you exporting importing also you can change okay and you are importing parameter whatever it is you are importing from the program into the function module you cannot change those things there okay so it's like that then uh, it's all pass by reference and there you have to explicitly define it for pass by value there is check box value there that we will check it will become pass by value okay now uh, generally when we try to come out of the function module we use the statements like uh, we raise a statement we use something called raise exception if there is a, some error or anything but in subroutine we use something called check exit stop those kind of things we use okay the syntax we use to call like perform we use to call the subroutine but for function module is different okay and function module name start with always start with jet or y and the subroutine can be anything anything it can be tables and work areas also are not shared between the function module and calling program okay so whatever the table i told you that in the subroutine we can pass as parameter tables also we can pass it will be shared among them but it is not shared with the function module okay so when i define any internal table here globally that will be available inside the subroutine also in that program not external subroutine but for internal subroutine here in the subroutine so if i define internal table here somewhere here i will define out in top include that will be available in this subroutine also for using as a global variable okay just like gb test is available here and its value will change it will reflect everywhere just like any other global but in case of function module when you will call whatever the global variable for this program will not be accessible inside this function module inside the function module only those parameters will be uh, accessible which you are passing into that just like we are passing a pa pb and cc only these three are accessible along with the global variables here but in that function module case only these three will be accessible not anything else not gb num or anything gb test whatever it is that we have defined here gb num something we did not gb num that will not be accessible there 
in the function model they don't share data with the role variables with program okay so these are the main difference between function model and subroutine okay and function model we can call something called a uh, special type of function model we have the main feature is a uh, main difference is something called rfc function model this is called remote function well we will see the difference between normal function model and remote function call function model or a enabled function model okay so this can be called from the external system also non sap system also we use it for web services and all this stuff to get uh, communicate and then we have multiple system we talked about right so we have uh, uh, like uh, i told you system landscape we uh, talked about right so we can have multiple system we can have customizing system we can have development system we can have a sandbox system so we using the rfc connections we can connect these systems and we can get data from one system to another system okay so that is the that is the like place for it. that is how it works so that is the main difference between function model and so let's first i will what i will do i will not create this first what i will do i will create a function group so how to create function group i think there is there is one option here function copy reassign no it's not there edit modification operation no we know we know go to function group right okay create group so from here you have to create or go to seat i told you to create any development object seat sorry seat s e e g o seat is the one stop solution for creating anything okay so you just put development object here function group okay and then give the name whatever you want to give its name cannot be this long you have to give that mod as g a will give let's say we see it hit enter it will ask you to create you create it that mod as g i think you can give the name f g a will give that modularized function group and f g function group for get more like it is just that okay give anything just save it and then i show you few things here okay first thing first you have to understand the concept of function group okay what is function group and why it is used. so first of all it is a program function group is in itself is a type of program okay so let's see in s38 if we have that in s38 when we create a program where is that yeah let's say there are one two i will try to create you can create we have that we have function group here function group is there right so function we have covered executed program we have covered include program we are going to cover today uh function group and subroutine pool is also something most like include but include a variety of purpose but subroutine pool will have only subroutine definition in it okay nothing else so that's what subroutine is about okay type pool will have all the types that we declare you remember begin of types begin of and we are defining the structures the local uh, data declaration the type declaration we are doing in our program type pool is for that one we have discussed this in the data dictionary objects also but we didn't discuss it in detail there so we can see it here but uh, let's not dig into that it's nothing but just like declaring all the types at one place and use that just like i'm using include program in my uh, program i writing include and that include name similarly you write type pool and then write the type pool name and whatever the type you have defined that you have you, you can use the direct work area direct internal table you can define using those types in your program so that's what type pool is okay So we have to clear most of the important things which we use. We don't use generally these things. Okay, internal interface pool, class pool, and these things. Okay, for internal interface and class pool, we see object oriented. Okay. So now we are creating function group from here. Also, you can create function group. So function group is a kind of program. Okay. Which let's not consolidate it. Yes, I don't want to create anything right now because I am already creating a function group here in S E T. Okay, so when you create function group here, and then you will by default you will have two includes created here. Okay, one will be top include, where you have all the data declaration whatever you want to declare here. Okay. So generally the naming convention of these includes three includes will be there. Okay, one will be your main program which gets created whose name will be 
start with SAPLZ, SAPL it will start with SAPL and then it will have this, uh, uh, you will see where you will see that program name, I'm not able to recall, additional function, properties or something, somewhere we need to see actually attributes or something with attributes, 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 execute, no, 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 go to attributes, oh, it's not showing, it's not any input program, what is that, it's not any input program, it's function group, we double click on it and you will see it's type as function group, should be, okay, anyways, so this is the function group by default it will have three uh, main components okay one two include will be there top include and uh, this user input this is called user input so this is called fm input actually sorry this is called fm input okay so whenever you are going to and this is called fm input or user input okay whenever you are going to add any function module inside this function group as I it was asking while creating the function we saw it was asking function group name if I will give this name function module will be one folder will be called function module here and in this include this include one entry will get added here with that name of that function group, function module I will show you that one okay we will create one okay and then we will have something called top include this is something which is used for sharing data across all the function module which has this function group like I have five function let's say there is a functionality how we club this function group based on the business let's say I have a purchase order creation okay purchase order creation purchase order changing and purchase order uh, let's say uh, deleting or something like that two three functionality are there let's say three functionalities are there and those three functionality has to be taken care by three different function models I have created because you can have n number of reports which will be doing this so you will create an user piece of code where you will pass the certain parameters let's say material vendor those things you will pass and it will automatically create purchase order okay we have that sir, the user function or something called BAPI BAPI PO create one BAPI PO create two those are the function model names which is used so I will show you that one let's see so they, those all will belong to same function group when you check in that so all consisting of same kind of functionality change create delete for some same business object it will be clubbed into one uh, uh, function group actually generally they will do that like that so let's see BAPI star and I will do it for BAPI P over here create star so baby pure create one so this is the new one actually baby pure create one this is the one let's go to this display of this function module and check its function group how to check function group simplest thing is just click on this tree structure button okay it will show you which function group it belongs to see this is the function group in 2012 in the SAP weird to plugging it I'm not sure but the baby you see baby pure change okay BAPI PO create, BAPI PO get detail, getting detail of purchase order, all related functionality, what are the IDOC processing, all the things related function model they have clubbed into one function group, everything they have clubbed into one function group, okay, and then there will be something called top include will be there, there has to be top include always, always in the function model there will be a top function group, sorry, include, and there will be a U access remember this convention always there will be a, always by default a top include will get created starting with l and the function group name l and then function group name it is also l and then function group name and the main program name will be sap l and function group name so these three things will already get created as soon as you will get it. so now you see top top will have the de declarations many types and uh, many what you call uh, data internal tables that variables those things will be declared which can be shared across all the function modules which belong to this function group okay what is the main purpose of this we will see that later let's say in uh, one uh, function module you want to create some entries and you hold it in an internal table in that function module and after that you come out of that function module in your report and you call the another function module of the same function group and there you want to update some entries using that previously created entries 
So how to get those data? Either you can do it through parameter, you pass it as importing and pass it as exporting, changing and then you get it in your program, then copy it into Intel, then again you pass it to the next function model. Or you can have a internal table in the top include of this function group, which those function model belongs to. Okay, and then here in one function model you will populate that uh, internal table and in another function model of that same group you can use it simply. It will hold those values. Okay, it's so a data sharing between uh, two function model of same group. We have this top include. So it's a variable sh sharing between two function model of same group. And then you have something called user include function. It will have list of all the uh, whatever the like you see whatever the function model we have created are corresponding to that one user include will get created okay in which we edit our code which is nothing but your function module your function module is nothing it's a short of include actually in the program in the function module program it's a kind of include which is included under user include this is called user include or fm include it is called it start, always starts with l and ends in uxx uxxy ux u01 u02 like that it will take the number as soon as you create a function module inside that uh, function group. So let's create function model inside it uh, either through SE 87, SE 37 or directly from here also you can create the same. Okay. Let process same, it will ask you same things. Okay, I'll give modularize FM. Something I will give. Okay. No. It will show you this warning as always function reserve for SAP. Just click OK, just ignore this one. Okay, and now you will see there is something called now function model has opened for you. So this, this function model folder has appeared inside it. Now you will see that include uxx include. It will have one entry here. And what is that entry for? The for this function model. That model is FM I have created for that that entry created. Okay. Either you can go here and double click, it will take you to the same screen. You see, import export or same screen. Or you can go here and it will take you to again same screen. It is in the same screen to only okay now you go to change mode and you have to define your all importing and exporting parameters here and then tables also you can do this is obsolete guys don't use this table at all don't use please don't use it okay this is obsolete this is just for supporting the old code existing code that's why SAP is carrying on this one but this is obsolete okay when you say we try something it will give you warning message here it's not error it's warning and then we can handle exceptions also in performer perform statement we didn't have any exception handling we have exception handling here okay and then we have a code here so whatever the logic you want to write based on these import export parameters you can write all the code here that we were writing the subroutine you remember in the definition of the subroutine so this is the definition part of the function model and now we will go ahead and we will uh, do some logic here the same thing a plus b thing we will do it here Okay, and we will see how it works. Okay, so now we will define. Uh, okay, good. Uh, declare type tab table is obsolete. Then what else do we cover here? Mm, exception handling is there, and then what all are there in the my notes? Actually, I prepare notes, guys. Whenever I do some study, I prepare notes and then, then I so that I don't miss out on anything. So generally, the convention here is always export e. It should start with e. That is a general convention. You can give anything. There is no naming convention. E, whatever you want, you can give. Okay, but I will give e underscore. Let's say result. This is the exception. Type. Let's say c or int4 or whatever, let's say int4, whatever you have been using, I will give that. And you see here, pass by value column is there. So, it's just like pass by value and result. Okay, sorry, it is just like pass by value that we discussed in the subroutine, right? It will not impact the value which is coming in the program unless if you check this one. So, pass by value if you click. Okay, and then here, I will give i underscore num1 and here I will give i underscore num2. These two I am importing from program where I am calling going to call this function module and 
can call it different value you can make it optional also you see otherwise what will happen if you don't mark it uh, like you if you make it optional and don't make it option what is the difference pass by value same concept as your subroutine so i'm not going to explain it again just just visit my previous video you will understand pass by value and reference by default it's pass by reference always okay by default it's pass by reference all values are getting passed as pass by reference if you want it pass by value you have to check this one and then there is changing also so changing and what is the difference between changing and exporting so exporting is just like using uh, that we had with pass by value and if you don't check the pass by value it's almost same changing the difference is like you can define instead of importing you can define the parameters in the changing if you want to change some variables which is coming from the program itself and exporting is like some uh, internal variable which you have created within the fm you can pass it on to this one so there is not much difference between exporting and changing or these three but i'm just sick of looking at it okay so import parameter you cannot change within the function or reliably okay that is the difference in uh, subroutine we had the option of using parameter also you are able to change inside the subroutine in the reference case but here we don't have that option i guess okay we'll check that let's define something called c underscore parameter Right, something I will do one int four I will give, and I will try to make this as well. Let me change this as well. So now you will see the signature will appear here at top for your reference. Just for these are commented codes because every time you change the here, it gets automatically refreshed to those parameters, and it appears here. If these are all importing parameter of this function model. This is exporting. This is changing. So what to do? Let's say what I am trying to write the logic i underscore. So these are the variables. Which is now locally available to this function only to write the logic. Just remember that whatever whatever is there, you don't have to data a statement. You don't have to declare these things. Just like in subroutines, whatever the formal parameters were there in the definition, you are directly using to write the logic. Similarly, you have to you can write here also. I equal to I num equal to num one sorry plus I and this under num two and this I will write it as e underscore result. to something and then c underscore param i will write something let's say e underscore uh, result uh, plus five something i will write let's say uh, it's just for sake of what you call let's say edit what it says i num two is only okay spelling mistake okay let's check again e result is unknown Result is unknown. Okay, S U L T. It should be S U L T. Okay, then. Okay, it's gone now. Activate it. Make sure you have activated your function group also. So properly activated, everything should get activated. Okay, and now we will see how to call this function model in our program. Okay, now you just copy this function model name. Go to your report. Okay, I will close this report one. Okay. We don't need this. We need only one report. So here we were calling subroutines, right? So let's replace this subroutine. Remove this. Okay. And go to pattern button here. Okay. And just give it here. Call function. You see here it says call function. Just click on that, and it's, it will generate the code template for you. Okay. So just done. You see, error nine twenty eight. It should be error because it is asking for parameters. This is not meant. These are mandatory. Whatever is the mandatory parameter, all will become highlighted here. You have to pass it here. Otherwise, all the option parameter will be commented. Okay. So you see, these are all mandatory parameter. Exporting whatever they are exporting from there is importing for us in the program. So there is no pass by. Uh, there is no optional parameter in the changing. You see, optional column is there. In the import also optional column is there, which I have not checked. So these are mandatory. So these are uncommented. All the optional thing, importing thing is optional. If you want to import, you import. Otherwise, if you don't want to import, then you don't import. It's your wish. So whatever is exporting here is importing here in the function only. You see the interface i underscore num one underscore two. So it's exporting from our program, but importing for the function model. So that's how you define. You can write this manually also all this code. Okay, it's up to you. And you have to collect all the like uh, you have to pass all the mandatory parameters. Otherwise, it will not take the execution issue error, or it will go for runtime error. We just pass it as Python here. 
I'll pass it battery here. So this is how we are passing in the subroutine also. You see, spidey battery and sub we are passing. So result I was collecting in sub. So I will give sub here. And again here I will give some other variable. Let's say GB num I will declare. So I will use that one here. Okay, and let's see what it's print. So here all the value. First time it should print all the value. And second time let's come in this. Thing. So we don't need this thing. Just go with this, we will check and we will execute. Let's give 2, we will give 3, and execute. The result of 2 and 3 is 5. So now the function module is doing addition for us. And GVNUM, how it is printing? Let's say I don't give anything, then what should be the output? It will be 0 and 0, default value 0, and it is saying 5 here for GVNUM. Why 5? Because I have added 5 to that and returned it. Now, Let's go inside the function only while debugging. We will see one thing I will show you. Let's go to here, let's give 3 here and execute. Okay, and we will go to inside the function only. The control will, the execution will transfer to that function model, that code that we have written. Okay, we will see here. F5 I will do. It will go inside item 1, item 2. Okay, this value is Let's try to change. You see, we cannot change this value, but E result, if you will see, there is an edit button is coming. In the debugging mode, I can edit this. If you try to change these values, I know my two because it is importing parameter of this function module. If you try to change it here, also then also you will get error. When you try to write the code or overwrite these values, you will get error there. Okay, reason being, these are importing parameters, cannot be changed. Are unlike, unlike our subroutines. In subroutines, using also we will change it. Along with the changing and returning parameter, whatever it is, we are changing the using parameter. Also. But importing is like using only, but it cannot be changed in the function module. Okay, so that is the biggest difference between a subroutine and function module call. So now you see its value will get copied to the e result. E result is having that value already in the previous call. Then it is F8, it is writing the output here. So this is how function module call works. Okay, so uh, then we have something called uh, exceptions also in the function model. Here you see something called exceptions. So what we can do, let's uh, handle some exception here. Okay, let's try to handle some exception here. Okay, I will give the exception name. What is the use of exception? We will see divide by zero. Let's say I give an exception. Okay, I will give capture. Divide by zero. So let's let's do one thing first. I have not uh, defined it here. Uh, let's change the logic. Instead of this sum, I will use divide. Okay, not here. Here. And let's see what will happen. I num I two. Okay. I num two. Sorry, I forgot how to use it. Is it the syntax? Never. Okay. So I am trying to divide it, the, both the numbers. Okay. So let's go to report and try to execute this. What it will do? It will divide and it will return the result into sub. Okay. So let's give 5 and let's give 2. It should return 2.5, something like that. Okay. So it's a. Uh, giving you two actually it's a mod and uh, actually div will have div will return you the uh, quotient and mod will return you the remainder so i will pass the mod here let's say okay let's pass the mod here that is the remainder okay and now mod mod so so these small things we don't use in uh, regular uh, program divide multiply very less use so that's why very easy to forget the syntax and all this. So now you execute it. So you see, uh, they just forget this text. 5 and 2 they divided. Quotient is 2, remainder is 1. Okay, so we are getting that output here. So now, I will remove this waypoint. Now what do you do? When you are executing it, just five, pass 5 here, and here, or any number, or pass 0 here, what will happen? You see, it will dump. It will dump, guys, it will dump. You see? Why it has dumped? It has
okay sorry guys so we have divided by zero exception we have found okay so now we don't want user doesn't want this kind of screen user want a proper message hey what is what has gone wrong okay so we therefore that we are going to do exception handling so let's say capture divided by zero exception okay so what i will do i will do something called try and catch so we will discuss the try and catch statements in our object oriented class this i am showing you here for the purpose of uh, what you call it so here it will show you the which exception has been read right so just copy this exception name here cx size some standard exception this way so what exception you want to catch in this statement so it will catch for you so i want to catch this okay and when it this is this has occurred what i want is and try okay and try try and try and in that i am trying to catch the exception when it has been executed so what i want i don't want to raise the ex uh, i don't want to go for dump i want to raise a proper exception raise uh, and we divide by zero so you see now in the signature exception is also appearing here at top along with the parameters it will automatically update this parameter as soon as you will add anything here in this case okay so i will say raise divide by zero exception okay that's all pretty printer divide by zero and now go to the report as it appeared and you have to uh, what do you call it z come on z module rise okay change and we have to call this function on login or you can directly manually also if you want you can uh, add exception series either you write it will come automatically divide by i think it should come control space divide by you press control space will show you available exception in that function module okay so that's a shortcut for seeing available things in any object so i will say let's say one so that means when it is uh, divided by 0 then it will raise set the size of rc as 1 that means if you will write here then you will write code here if size of rc equals 1 and if then you want to give a proper message and when you want to write the output only when this is not size of rc1 else okay when size of rc0 or size of rc initial that means correctly uh, that there was no divided by 0 exception then only you want this so you can do that also okay so if part this pretty printer it will look more meaningful if else if here you can raise a message error message saying that message uh, remember last time we discussed this one don't divide by zero don't divide by zero type let's give it as type i okay i will give it as an information okay so i will do this and just try to now try to execute it with five and try to execute with zero now you see don't divide by zero no dump or anything right so just give you a two i will give you execute you see result is coming fine now okay so this is how you raise exception in the function model and one last thing that has been left in the function model is the tables no, sorry tables we are not going to use you are going to use this uh, changing or import export parameter so let's say i want some internal table to process it. let's say i want data from uh, sprite table so do one thing you remember the concept of uh, table type i told you we are going to use it in the here uh, let's say s right i will try to find out some table type search for table type for s right there is a table type s right tab one let's see if it is using s right line uh -huh. so line type is s right so a table database table also can be used as a line type a structure they have used their field so this is the table type for s right so what you do you add a changing parameter here let's say c underscore s byte 
type and you give table type here sorry control j and type and then you give table type here okay so what it will do and make it uh, optional i won't pass table then also function model should execute otherwise it will give you error now the c is c is flight you can uh, that internal table you can pass of this table type and you can process it here for further let's say i will loop this c table loop at mm, c it will update here also the c s flight has updated so c underscore s flight into some work area i will declare later we have to declare this and and loop and i will write something let's say write ls s flight iphone care id okay let's print only care id so whatever is there i am printing care id and now you have to declare uh, data as well just make sure you have declared that to work area ls s flight type s flight okay so we have to define a work area we have loop the internal table into work and we are writing the care id and we are not uh, bothered about these things let it be then place that is not making any difference so we are seeing how to process internal tables in the function model okay how to pass internal tables okay so we have passed it in the changing parameter here so you can change it value inside also so right now i'm just reading the value and printing it i can change the value also of the internal table okay that we will see something we will see from that field symbol concept in that we will see okay and we will use modify and update statement insertion those things we will see using that we can to update the values in this table okay internal table. so now we have to pass this parameter okay right so in the report we have to add one more changing parameter here you see c underscore uh, as right was the name so this side all on the left side will be the name of the parameter on the left side it will be the name of the parameter from the function module only so it should exactly be the same and here you will pass your own internal table from here you are passing the data actual data so let's fetch data from s flight into this lts flight select star all fields i'm selecting from s flight into table lts flight okay that's all i'm not doing any pretty way size of rc check or anything because i know there are data in this table it will all will get fetched so first i have to declare this also here this is the internal table i have not declared it here so let's declare it in the top so generally we follow the naming convention of i can give just comma and type standard table of type uh, type directly i can give guys that same table type also or you can give a standard table of s flight i can give using line type i can declare or i can use the same table type here just type give and we give table type now. so it will create an internal table so then we are declaring globally make it gt okay make it gt don't give uh, what you call lt give gt just a naming convention okay it's not mandatory but better follow proper naming convention global variable gt local variable lt local tables okay now activate it activate both the stuff okay and i want to activate in this one only activate oh shit okay there was some error let's let's see what was the error i'll save it again and i'll try to activate let's see what is the error s flight sl flight i have missed it Written here. Okay. Now there is no error. Just activate and let's check our function module is also active. You have to make sure that function module is also activated. Okay. So function module is also active. Now it should print all the care ID. Oh, let's something something. Not zero. Not two. And give F8. You see. All the care ID has been printed. At the end, it is printing the right statement also in our program. So first function module is getting called, and whatever is it's writing, returning and writing in the output, it is getting written. Then this uh, part is getting executed. This one. Size of is not one. There was no divide by zero exception. Okay, so this way you can handle the exception. This way you can pass the tables and you can uh, process inside and you can change the values of the table, whatever you want to write. Now this. Function module I can call in any program, independent of this program. I don't have to give a, give reference of this program. I just take this G modularize 
and I can go to that uh, program G modulize one, right? I have created that another program. So let G modulize one. I will go to change mode, and here also I can go and just call this function model. We go to pattern, give the name of the function model, click OK, and it will appear. So and there is one setting, guys. If you go to utilities and settings, there is one setting for function model call pattern. You see, name of the actual parameter same as function parameter. Okay. For exception generate when try and try general exception without generate exception without others. Okay. Without others means there is a something called others by default will come. Okay now. So for function model I have checked this name of actual parameter. Now you will see what will happen. I will just control Z here. Sorry. Control Z I will remove the I will call this function model again and you will see something. You see? It has declared right side parameters also for you by default based on the same type as from the function model and the data declaration is also done here for you. You don't have to define the right hand side parameter in your program on your own. You just cut it and paste it in your data declaration subgroup that include or at the top of the program and then just use these variables and you can pass it. In. The name can be same, no problem. Okay, but and you can change it if you want you can just change it as per your convention lv gv whatever you want to make it you can change it so this is just for shortcut to avoid declaration of all the parameters of the same type here what i did in the previous program i defined this gts flight table and then gts flight i again declared you see and by default it has declared this okay i had to declare separately and then fetch data and now i can directly uncomment this and then just i can write the logic here of uh, select a star from this flight and into c flight and then c flight is already getting false so these are optional parameter that's why it is coming as comment so just make it uncomment if you want to use it and then make it uncomment and you have uncommented this so there will be no syntax error because all the variables are already declared here okay so let's ex execute this one let's execute okay perform is not existing okay that i have commented out so that's why that's the error let's change this let's remove that perform statement of external subroutine call so let's remove this one now again this subroutine will write everything in the output if test okay it is writing zero because let's comment this comment this and it should write all the what you call so it is not able to find anything here because num is by default going zero that is the reason okay so let's make one thing as in the function model currently we don't need it now so make it optional these two will make it optional export is already by default it's optional and cprom also will make it optional so maximum time you will try to make things optional unless it's like something mandatory let's say you want to update a purchase order okay so if you want to update a purchase order, you need a purchase order number. That's a mandatory input. So user has to pass the purchase order number. That should be mandatory input. Along with that, purchase order description, vendor name, those should be optional. He should pass only what he wants to update, only those values. But purchase order number has to be mandatory. So in that case, you want to make it optional. Okay. So that is one example why you make it optional or not, not optional okay, or mandatory. So now let's execute this one. So it get activated okay and execute why oh, it's not happening okay what i did wrong that i am still passing this parameter i don't have to pass these parameters okay i don't have to pass it reporting parameter now neither c params now syntax check activate and now execute it will write all the values what is happening still it is checking checking that one so what i can do in the source code i can make it here like uh, i can put a condition if i num is if this is not initial check i will put okay and and if i will put here okay so if i am not passing any value it will not execute that portion of the code and it will simply write all the care ids now let's go and execute that program Okay, it should. Oh. Okay, okay, we are not passing any value here. We have to give the select query as well. And select star from S flight into 
table c underscore s right right this i was missing right now it will give all the data right we are not passing the data how it will write okay so that's all for today and keep like uh, keep watching all the videos stay tuned i will release soon more and we have few things more on modularization in the next section we will discuss about uh, uh, macros a little bit and then we will shift our gear to the field symbols and how to use the field symbol dynamic internal tables and debugging concepts okay so thanks for uh, listening and thanks for your, all your feedbacks and comments and mails thank you so much keep sharing keep subscribing and stay tuned